Welcome back. I am thrilled to give you my take on the five games that I bought at the Miniature Market Memorial Day sale. So we played through all the games several times with a varying group of people and I just had such a good time. Now I just want to be up front. I did not know that much about these games going in. All I knew was that I wanted to buy them for a particular reason, which I will just briefly mention when I talk about the game. Um, but these were games that I just bought cold, essentially. And when you do that, as everyone knows, you get some stinkers. Well, I did not get any stinkers. I, I just was so pleased. I would absolutely recommend all five of these games for a variety of reasons and for varying numbers of players. So stay tuned for my suggestions and my tips on how to play these games. Um, but I would say that all of these games are sevens or above. That means that it's staying in the house and not all the games that come in the house stay in the house. <laughs> So I will start with the essentially fifth favorite game. I'm not going to say the least liked because I liked them all. So my fifth uh, favorite game was Minuscule. This is a great game. It's perfectly fine. I have played it since. I even talked about it when this was the only game of the five that I'd actually played prior to filming my last video. It stands up. And it actually plays incredibly well with any number of players. It, it was so fun with four because everybody still gets the same amount of turns. And it was exciting and dynamic. And it, it's just a great short game that has just enough strategy that you don't feel like it's all nonsense or blind luck or just pick any card from your hand. There really is a bunch of fun stuff with Minuscule. I think that the thing I like the most about it is the card selection. Much like in Downforce, you are dealt your entire hand for the game and you have to select one card from your hand to play. And that's one of my favorite features with Downforce and Minuscule has that. So Minuscule is a thumbs up but it does come fifth in my list of the games that I enjoyed from my haul. My fourth favorite game from the collection is Aviation Tycoon. I got this because I like those kinds of rail stock games and this absolutely offered it to me. I think this is a great game. It's perfectly fine. I think that the production quality is probably where it falls down a little bit. Um, the design, the graphics, the uh, board and the layout, uh, not necessarily uh, wholly intuitive or engaging or, you know, beautiful in any way. But the game and the heart of it is really cool. You're acquiring stocks and playing essentially one stock at a time which means that you are trying to gain that um, a majority in a particular stock in planes. There are four different routes and you're competing with your fellow players in having stock investment but also being the president because the president gets to go first and they get a bonus. And sometimes the events essentially at, say you get more money if you have stock in a particular color. The events were really interesting and they definitely changed our game and so I think that the kind of like up in the air variety of well this particular city is closed this round and you can't go in or out of it, this stock gives you bonus, um, the way that all the money is divvied out at the end of the round is based on uh, whoever has priority which is more stock and then they get a thousand dollars for every stock investment they have and then it goes to the next player who has the second most, third most, fourth most. And so I think with this game, there's not necessarily going to be replayability, but it's a good game. It's a good, basic, simple stock, like, airplane game, right? <laughs> um, so it's awesome. It does get fourth favorite. But I liked it, and we had a really good time with it. My third favorite game is... First and Feld. Uh, first and felt I got because of Freedom and Freeze and I wasn't disappointed. I think the really cool thing about this game is that you have a personal deck of cards that are essentially your 
buildings that you can build that give you bonuses and actions and investments and things. And every player has the same deck, but you shuffle them up and you draw a certain number on your turn and you have a certain number that you get to keep at the end of each round. And so you're, if you're smart, you can kind of keep track of where your, your cards are and you're going to go through your deck about a time and a half, maybe two times before one player triggers the end of the game by building six of the victory point buildings. There's essentially this kind of, you want to get first to sell all of your hops and your water and your resources before the other players so that you can potentially um, lower the price that they're going to get paid out per item that they sell. But you can only go to one brewery at a time, like one tile, and each one of those tiles has a different value or stock price on that item. This is a clever game. This requires a lot of planning and strategy. It absolutely is super replayable and I think that honestly this one ties my ranking position with my number two but I think that my number two pick I like just a titch more because it reminds me of another game that I really enjoy. And so that's why that one kind of like just pushes me over the edge. I think Versenfeld is a clever, fun, interesting game that probably plays better with more players than fewer players. So that's my suggestion for Versenfeld. My second favorite game of the list is Papillon. Papillon was one that I knew nothing about. Every single other game here I had some connection with the designer or some connection with the line of games and I felt like with Papillon I was like, oh boy, I don't know what this is. I don't even know what kind of gameplay it is. I mean with the Tycoon game I'm like, this is a rail game. I don't know what this game is but I, I know what rail games are and stock games. So with Papillon I was thoroughly impressed with the majority control over the types of um, essentially flowers and collections of gardens that you make with your tiles and how you clip on your little colored butterflies to each one to represent that you have one uh, investment in it, two investment, three investment, and whoever has the most butterflies on each flower at the end of the game, and by the way the flowers are 3D, they're a little finicky but they're, <laughs> they're super cute and they have great table presence. The person who has the most butterflies on each flower essentially gets the majority points and the points are listed at the bottom so every time you play those are going to be shuffled around and changed so it's not static and it's a first, second, third place and so there might be a bigger difference between first and second or first and third or second and third and so you really have to figure out well which one do I put it on if I have a choice between two of the blue uh, flowers or two of the yellow flowers and so forth. So the thing that I like about Papillon the most is that it reminds me of Carcassonne. So you get to place tiles in your own personal player area as opposed to a collective area, but it's the same thing. A field matches a field, a blue matches a blue, a yellow matches a yellow, red matches red, and there are different configurations of tiles that you get to add to your area. And when you close off an area, you count the amount of tiles in that particular collection, and that's how you get your butterflies on the flowers. Now, the way that it bids in the beginning with the tile drafting, definitely play with more than two players. My first game, I had two players, and the game is adjusted for that, and we didn't necessarily have as good a time. It wouldn't have actually ranked this high had I not played it again with three players. And with three players or four players, that's, that's where this game works really, really well. So make sure you have more because then you're playing with the full game and you're playing with the bidding mechanism with your little worms. And I think that's where the game is at. There's this first phase where you lay out tiles and you essentially take a row or a column and you just get everything in that row or column. But it's about bidding for who gets to go first and you have to bid these little worms, and you have a limited number, and you may not get them, and so there's this real, do do I pick this, or do I choose that, or do I go last and get more worms for next time? There are eight rounds, and I think Papillon is a wonderful game, super replayable. I like it. It's pretty, too. It's really pretty. It's got such good quality of production. I, I honestly don't know why people aren't talking about Papillon. I, I, don't, I don't know why. I missed it, clearly but people should be talking about Papillon. They should be playing it and enjoying it. It's great. Okay, so if you saw my video where I talked about all the games, you know which game is last, which means this was the game I enjoyed the most. 
It is Key to the City, London. This is in the Cathedral Games, which we've got three of, and I mentioned that as well. Um, but Key to the City, London is actually, as the rules state, an easier game than Cathedral. It's supposed to be kind of like Cathedral light, and it is. It's simplified and it's more streamlined and it's really fun. There's a lot of strategy here and there's an insane amount of replayability with this simply because there are so many tiles, so many combinations. The way the player bidding works with your meeples that you draw from the bag and how many meeples you get based on how early you go out in the round is just so brain, it's like squeezes my brain. Um, my, I wasn't actually the one the most affected by. I taught this to Lewis in the first entire phase. We have there. There's five rounds essentially. The first round, um, he just sat at the table and just kept saying that his brain hurt <laughs> because he couldn't figure out what to do and how to do it. And I thought that was awesome because I don't usually see Lewis um, kind of in that AP. Uh, usually it's me that has analysis paralysis, and so he was really. Um, taken by this game as well in, in the same way that I was with so much um, strategy and planning and I, I don't know there's just a lot here there's a lot here to love um, it's clean it's beautiful the wooden bits and pieces are just wonderful the tiles are um, easy to read the iconography is clear it's a well-produced game and it's a super just one hour strategy game in the key universe so I liked Key to the City London a lot. It definitely rose to the top of my favorites of the five games. Now here's the really fun thing. After Lewis and I played all these games um, together and or with other friends, we sat down separately and wrote down our list of which ones we liked the most to the which ones we liked not as much. And we matched game for game for game on, on our little sheet of paper. So we both thought that it was Key to the City London, Papillon, Fersenfeld, Aviation Tycoon, and the Minuscule, while still saying the Minuscule is a great game. So we actually felt the same about all five of these games, but what do you think about these games? Particularly now that you saw some images and learned a little bit more about the gameplay of these five games. Let me know in the comments, and as always, thank you so much for supporting me and just being kind and just liking the videos and writing me awesome comments. Um, it means a lot, and hopefully I'll be able to do some more of these videos in the future. Thanks for watching.